Okay, there's the last of the coffee. Hey, welcome everybody. This is the first edition of Season 3 of American Picker Man, Episode 1. Um, it's been beautiful the last couple weeks, and I, while I expected yard sales to pick up, it's been a little scattered, a little slower than I thought. Still have a few things to show you. Uh, I think I'm going to leave it in the uh, uh, cold weather quickie format where I just kind of edit everything together and never mind with the bobbing in and out of uh, picture thing and trying to show you everything. Uh, anyway, so I've got a number of good things, uh, a number of bad things. I'm probably going to show you everything. So without further ado and uh, yeehaw and whatness, uh, here we go. All right, first out of the shoot, I've got a 1963 McGregor football. This is a uh, Ford punt, pack, punt pass and kick uh, award football, I guess. Uh, it's got a whole bunch of fake signatures of uh, you know a bunch of my old favorites: Bart Starr, Sonny Jurgensen, Jerry Kramer, the whole gang from uh, you know the good old days of football. Uh, not that they're so bad right now, mind you. Uh, it's still the best game going out there, I think. Uh, anyway, I paid 15 for that, uh, a little more than I wanted to pay, but uh, it was the first day I'm on a state sale, so I couldn't dicker them down too much. Only got five off of it, but still looking to get uh, 30 to 40 for that, so not too bad. Okay, so here's an old favorite, the Casio Tone. This is the SK5, complete with the uh, sampling feature there, so you can put in your own sounds and loop them. Uh, it's uh, sought after by those circuit vendors out, out there. Uh, paid five for it. It's in really good condition. It's got a $50 bid on it as of now. I expect it to go for it more like uh, 60 or 70 bucks before, it was all, all is the, before all is said and done, that is. By Druk. A wooden, uh, this is called the clapper game. It doesn't turn your lamp on and off, but it's a dice game where you uh, roll two dice and try and eliminate all your numbers and have a low score. And gosh, it's a lot of fun. But fortunately, unfortunately, that is, it's not worth a whole lot. I paid only a dollar for it. It's worth uh, 10 to $20 on a lucky day. So there you have it. Uh, something I don't usually buy is a uh, carnival glass. It's not because I don't like it. It's because I'm not very good with carnival glass and old dishware. It's something I need to work on, I guess. Uh, but this is carnival glass. I did buy it thinking it was, and by gosh it is. It's called the Open Rose Pattern. Uh, made by Imperial, I guess, in the early 1900s. I paid a dollar for it. goes for anywhere from about $8 to $25, so we'll call it 10 an unmarked butter dish, clear, and yeah, no markings. It's a little bit shorter than your standard stick of butter these days, and uh, I couldn't find any real info on it. Paid a dollar for it. I'm guessing five if I'm lucky, so yeah. Woohoo! Picked this up about a month ago, and I don't remember what I paid for it. I think I paid around 15 for it. It's a Schaefer's TM uh, fountain pen case, which, you know, I might get 10 for that. And then uh, there was a couple of pens in there. You know, old fountain pens, you know, good shape. They all have gold tip nibs on them. Gold tip, gold nib tips. I don't know. Anyway, there it is. Look at that. There you go. Uh, these will each go for about 15 bucks a piece, so I'll get my money out of that. From my local Goodwill, picked up this set of opera glasses and a case. A little bit of water damage on the case. Made in Japan by Bellevue, I guess. That's what it says on there. It's only got a 2x uh, multiplication on the, uh, on the range there, or on the viewing, whatever you want to call it. It's got the leather housing, kind of nice, but unfortunately only worth about 10 bucks. No big deal there. Here's the big buck bargain of the, the week here. I paid a dollar for this guy. I walked this by this no fewer than three times, thinking about it, not buying it, not buying it. So I was really lucky that it was still there that third time or fourth time I walked by it. It's a, uh, a Hellum vacuum, uh, vacuum uh, coffee maker. Kind of sought after, I guess, as, uh, as the Internet tells me. Like I said, I paid a dollar for it, and I'm hoping to get about a hundred bucks for it. So good find there. A couple of milk glass uh, mugs here. I rule the roost, and I rule the rooster. So <laughs> this one's for the guys, you know. Ha! <laughs> Here's the ones for the girls. They rule the rooster. Okay, I paid a dollar for the two of them, and they're only worth about maybe maybe ten bucks for the pair. Uh, some classic humor here. Uh, complaint department, take a number. See, and you pull the number, and it pulls the pin out of the grenade, and you blow up because no one wants to hear your damn complaints. Sorry, your darn complaints. Uh, anyway, it's a, not a real grenade, it's, uh, but it was made from an actual casting, it looks like, because I've had these before with the cast iron ones, but this is just a uh, resin, so it's lighter weight. But isn't that funny? People are going to pay a lot for that? No, not really. Ten bucks if I'm lucky, but only a dollar, so. Okay, from an estate sale recently, I bundled a bunch of stuff together, and for... $20 picked up uh, this handful of goods. This is a, what's it called, a tie, tie bond. It's a little cap gun cannon. Stick a cap in there. That's, that slides forward. 
one cap shooter here. Uh, anyway, I paid, so I guess I got like five pieces here. So $4 for that. That's got an $11 bid on it right now. Uh, picked up this pullback uh, friction type car, tin car. No markings on it. No idea how old it is, where, who made it. Nothing works, but so far at $5 starting, it has no bid. So. And this is a dinky toy, little uh, art, you know, artillery trailer thing. I don't know, call it what you want. It's worth, uh, it's got a $10 bid on it right now. So take that. Don't expect it to go too much higher, maybe 15 Got this little this little fella right here with the pipe. Uh, I think it's a Britain's, but it's not marked. Uh, got the little adjustable arm so he can smoke his bowl there. Smoke his pipe. Uh, and that's got a $10 bid on it too. And uh, here, take a look at this if the focus will let you. Uh, I'm, I, I put this up and I listed it as FDR, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, uh, for those of you, you know, unfamiliar with the guy. Uh, there's no markings on it other than made in USA, and there's just enough wear on the face where you can't get a good look at the guy, but it has this uh, definite World War II type of feel to it. And, uh, you know, he was the man in World War II, so I listed it as that, and uh, no one's corrected me yet. Of course, no one's bid on it either, so there's that. But uh, I'm hoping to get, uh, actually, I started that at $24.99 because I couldn't find any lead toy, FDR toys out there. So roll the dice, see what happens. Probably won't get the $24.99, but eventually maybe $10 or $15. I thought I had a real beauty here uh, until I looked at it a little closer today. Bought this last weekend. Uh, today's March 26th, by the way, or at least it was while I did this filming. I have no idea what day you're watching it. It could be 2014 or 16 by now. I have no idea. Uh, anyway, I paid five dollars for this beauty. It's uh, what's it called? It's uh, yeah, let me see. Imperialites. The Imperialites. Uh, it's a ceiling lamp, you know, and I, you know, this pulls down and retracts so you can put it down to, uh, you know, adjust your lighting needs. Anyway, it's got a copper finish on it. Uh, it's got a great looking design on the uh, shade there. Problem is, when I bought it, I didn't see it has a real nice crack there. How I missed that, I don't know. I'm guessing I didn't even look for it. That's how I missed it. So, word to the wise. Look for cracked shades. Anyway, it was only five bucks. If it hadn't been cracked, plus it's got a ding right there, a little shine, nice ding. I'm guessing if it had been, you know, as pristine as I thought it was, I'd, it probably would have gone for over a hundred. As is, uh, I'm gonna hope for 50 or 60 on it, which on a five dollar purchase, you won't catch me complaining. Okay, a couple of quick uh, rapid fire things. Quick rapid fire, isn't that a bit redundant, Joe? Well, yes, it is. Anyway, here we go. Paid a dollar for these uh, 1974 black velvet cards. Might get five or ten out of them, maybe. Budweiser cards, also vintage. No real value there, but that was only 50 cents. Eight hours before Richmond. If I put it in my uh, in my store, might get ten or fifteen for that. Paid a dollar. Another dollar for the uh, True Grit. That's worth about fifteen or twenty. It's not a first printing. It's a fourth printing, but still has some value to it. Uh, John Smith USA, I paid a dollar for that as well. Um, in the condition it is, which isn't great, maybe 10 or 15. Another store item. And the I just got this because it had such an awesome name and awesome cover. White Witch Doctor. Really cool, but it's a book club edition, and even if it weren't, it still isn't worth squat. Paid a dollar, lost a dollar. For four dollars, got this really cool uh, vintage uh, orange juice uh, vase. It's a vase. Well, I guess it could be a vase, but it's not. It's a picture. It's a picture of a vase. Anyway, and there's uh, five of these little glasses to go with it. Nice frosted look to it. It really needs some cleaning. It's got some nasty uh, smoke and dust garbage build up there. But I'm going to clean those up a little bit and I'm looking to get, uh, I don't know, 20 25 bucks for it. Did I say it was $4? It was $4. Okay, the coffee's still flowing and we're still going here. Picked up a whole stack. I think there's 13 there of these uh, TDK empty cassette tapes got the basket tossed in for free ha! take that anyway unfortunately they're not the high bias it's just the normal normal run-of-the-mill tape so my dollar is only gonna net me uh, five ten if I'm real real lucky so no biggie there cookie break because I don't have enough stuff piled up that I'm never gonna sell didn't buy one bought two cases of 45s sorted through them paid five dollars for the two you wanted five dollars a piece but uh half of them were so they were all water damaged all the labels were, labels were all knackered on them so got them for five bucks uh sorted them out this is the good box this is the bad box i have to remember which one to bring to goodwill so uh, unfortunately even in the good box there's not a whole lot of good there there's several for you know worth five dollars a couple worth ten dollars but 
most of them, probably all of them, will just go in the stack pile there and I'll sell them or leave them to my children. I have no idea. Okay, a little help here needed on this guy. It's a little Japanese uh, porcelain figurine there. Cap comes off, cap, the lid from the little treasure box or whatever you want to call it. And inside are two, I'm guessing there was four at one time just based on the size of the pocket in there. I don't know if this is for putting a tea bag on, for resting your chopsticks on, for putting some, you know, wasabi sauce on. I don't know. It uh, just says made in Japan, and uh, it's kind of a nice little thing. You know, got to clean it up a little bit. It's got a little dust and smoke crap going on there, but uh, good size. No chips, no damage. But what exactly is it? Anybody? Anybody? Uh, old habits die hard, and I just cannot seem to get it through my head that I need to check well, I need to check, uh, you know, the glass shades on ceiling fixtures. And I also need to check knife points on pocket knives. Well, this isn't a pocket knife. It's a Schrade multi-tool. But, looky there, broken tip on the, on the knife right there. So I'll have to grind that down. I paid $5 for this guy. And this is a very cool uh, Cutmaster hook knife here. This will probably go for about 15 or 20 that guy right there. And just because of the broken tip on that, probably only 10 or 15 on the multi-tool. Because I just won't learn. Okay, I'm probably, I don't know, maybe this year I'm not going to show any more Nintendo stuff. Because if you haven't learned that, uh, you know, Pokemon Game Boys are money, well, then you need to, you need to know that. Because this is just boring. To oh, money, it's money, it's money. It's a Game Boy, it's a Pokemon, it saves, it's worth money, it's good money. Buy it. But I may not waste my time showing it to you because who wants to see a Pokemon thing? Anyway, this, the Pokemon for the last time now, and uh, a Game Genie to go with it. Paid uh, $5 for the whole works, and that all together will probably, I mean, this is 20 right here, so, you know, probably 30 35 for the rest of it all together. The rest of it all together. Everything all together, 30 to 35 Okay, and what I believe is the last item of the week is a Paragon uh, light timer, industrial type thing. Uh, right there. New in the box. Well, new old stock anyway. It's probably from the 50s or 60s or maybe earlier. I don't know. Anyway, it's never been used. It's never been tested. I'm not going to hook it up. So it's going to be sold as is. I paid 15 for it. I've got it up for 80 and I don't have any bidders yet. No watchers. Had a, several looks at it. I think I'll get my money out of this. Uh, maybe not 80 but no less than 60 so pretty good find on that. That's it for this week. Uh, as I said earlier, stay tuned for updates on a few things that sold the last month. Sorry. Uh, hopefully we can start uh, the season rolling and keep uh, keep the uh, keep the words flowing. That's what we got to do. So we'll get to uh, I hope uh, edition number two of season three. Hopefully next week. Hopefully every week from here on through the spring through the summer. Enjoy, everybody. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time. Sorry for the rambling. But that's what coffee does.